In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your own powerful black and white style effects on your own photography images within the program Adobe Lightroom. It doesn't take long and it looks very amazing, so enjoy the rest of the video. Yo, what's going on guys, it's Garrett, and in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys a tutorial on how to create your own black and white themed, you know, effects on a photography image um, in Adobe Lightroom. This is a really awesome program. It's used specifically for photography and some video editing, but it's mostly, you know, used for adding those effects like color corrections or CCs or filters to whatever you guys want to call them. But uh, really quickly, I do want to say that I'm going to be using more Adobe products in my YouTube channel. So more of Lightroom, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, all that kind of stuff. So definitely stay tuned on my channel for that. But right here is going to be the example we're going to be making. It's a very, um, you know, dark, subtle, you know, big high contrast image. And I wanted to use this because it has a lot of architecture and it really shows all like the in the little separate pieces. So that's going to be the image that we're going to always end up with. However, this is the one we're going to be starting with. So you can see it's a huge difference from, you know, that to this. It tells a whole different story, whether this can be like a dark storytelling picture with like, you know, a nice dark quote on it, or this could be just a regular image. But uh, really going into this, all I want to do is open up Lightroom and basically just bring your image into it. You guys can, you know, hit develop, you guys can hit import, however you want to do it. But uh, going, you know, into more of the basics, I'm just going to hide all of these. Right here is going to be your HSL color or B and W. Basically, B and W means black and white. So I would click that right off the bat and you guys can leave this the same. You guys can mess with the colors, but I don't really want to mess with the mix yet. I do want to mess with the basic, but mix is definitely, you know, for last or if you even want to touch it at all. So I go into basic right away and I leave the first two, the um, temperature and the tint down just because it's nothing you want to touch. It's a black and white image. You really don't want to mess with those kind of things. And then of course for your highlights, you guys can bring them all the way up or all the way down. I like bringing my highlights, you know, pretty significantly down, maybe like minus 60. And then my blacks, I'm going to bring down as well to kind of create that separation between everything. So you can mess with these and how you want to put them, but these will be touched, you know, later on. So I'm going to go minus 31 against minus 38. And then for my shadows, you guys can really mess with this. I want to make it so these kind of indents right here, if I zoom in, you guys can totally see what I'm talking about right here like the indents of the doors i do want to get rid of those so that's gonna be number one on my list and then you can take your shadows maybe bring those down a little bit more and then your whites you can bring up you can bring down the whites i'm really going to kind of make pop a little bit more against that black so we have most of these figured out the exposure if you guys don't know we've used that a lot it's kind of like the brightness or darkness so for the exposure i'm just gonna probably leave the same for now i might go back and change that and then for the contrast of course i'm gonna bring that up just a little bit probably like a plus maybe 15 plus 17 looks fine so after i'm done with this you guys can mess with the clarity the clarity is really like how sharp you want the image to be versus how like kind of blurred out and I don't want to make this too crazy, maybe um, like plus 10 to plus 15 at the most. And then you can leave the rest the same because you don't really want to touch those. So going down the list, you have tone curve next. And I like using this because it's kind of like the curve tool on Photoshop. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit to kind of bring those whites out. And then this to kind of bring out those darks. So we have something going on like this. And once you change those, this whole entire region stuff um, changes as well. You can also, you know, change this from linear to medium contrast, strong contrast. But I like leaving it just the way it is. So keep going down. You're going to have split toning. Um, I don't touch that, but you can go to details next, which are basically like the sharpening of your objects. And you can see that it leaves like a little thumbnail above it. So you can really see how sharp you're making things. And you can change, you know, the detailing. And I like moving these around a lot because it really like you can pretty much zoom in right here and basically figure out everything. Noise reduction. If anything, you bring that up to like 10 and leave it the rest. But you can never go above 10. I don't really like messing with that either. And then you can go to lens correction, which is basically the distortion. If you want to make your image all warped and stuff like that, you obviously can. It's something that I don't really touch. And then you're going to have your vignetting, which I'm going to put just down a little bit for now. Maybe minus 60 in the midpoint. Let's find out where it goes. 
maybe to eight. So we have something going on like this, so we can be bringing out the clouds in the corners. So you can have profiles for this or manual. Manual things are a lot better because you really have a customization. I'm not gonna touch the transform. And then for your effects, you have a highlight priority, which you can bring around that kind of brings out the highlights. But if you work it backwards, it actually creates a darker vignette around everything. So if I put it right there, you can change the midpoint and then maybe the feather and then highlights. So if it brings out that white and then grain lead the same, which is basically the grain is like the noise grain. So definitely leave that all at the bottom and then dehaze is something that you do not want to mess around with. So now that we have that, this is kind of like the bare bones of the picture. Now you can start adding your own custom um, radio filters and you know distortion effects. So at the top right here, there's gonna be these grad or graduated filters. Um, basically, if you click those and you can basically click right here and bring this up. And I like bringing this up probably like that long and then put this to the bottom and middle. It's gonna bring up a separate menu right here that has your own like edit. So you can edit the exposure on the bottom which is really what's used to kind of create these dark kind of backgrounds. And if you guys have watched my tutorials a lot, I like using exposure. And I'm gonna be bringing out those blacks and those really dark colors. The clarity, of course, is gonna keep going up. And then once you're done with this or whatever you wanna do, just make sure you hold shift and then rotate it so it's up 90 degrees. Some people just like don't worry about that. You can click done or you can basically just grab it again and then go like this but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click done and then i'm gonna add another one so i'm gonna keep doing these you know a few does not hurt anybody but you basically want to customize each one differently so go like this maybe bring up the contrast just a little bit And then I'm gonna click done. So we have kind of like a dark background going. And you can change these if you click on her here and then you click the little circle. You can go back and change the contrast and exposure of the image. So don't feel obligated once you do one thing, you can't go back and change it. Cause we're gonna do a lot of changing. And then right here is a radial filter, which basically it creates a radial effect on it. And you never want these to be too insane. So, you know, leave that almost like this. And then the shadows come out, maybe bring out some white in the background. And then of course some highlights in the clouds and the windows. Click done, and then we have this. So now that you guys have really like the whole entire picture coming along, you do wanna go back inside the details and the basic to kind of start messing around with more whites because you really wanna bring out some extra color or well, not extra color, but extra like contrast between everything. Cause contrast is really key in artwork and in regular work, you don't want blended together you know colors like you don't want this whole entire black piece being separated by white the contrast is really what makes our eyes you know fall apart to something like if you go right up here into this window let me zoom in you can see that the contrast is really breaking it down from the white to the black and that's why our eyes create that depth field so you can even see like inside these um statues that the contrast is basically the white touching these darkest blacks. It's gonna basically make our eyes notice that this goes inwards. You know, this can pop out other words and then this has like a crease in it. So it's really um interesting on how your eyes, you know, develop this contrast. So it's really something that everyone wants to worry about is definitely contrast and making sure that everything is not too dark or too bright. So I'm gonna put that basic down before I start touching it too much. I'm gonna go to effects and I'm gonna mess around with that midpoint again and the amount it's darkening. So we have maybe this. You mess with the highlight. I'm gonna leave the rest the same. And then once you guys are actually done with this image, let's just say we're gonna post it into Photoshop now and maybe add some other effects. Go to file, go to export, and then you wanna go right here. I'm putting mine to my desktop and then with my custom name, tutorial BW and just click export. And um, I'm exporting this to my hard drive. A lot of people export it to other things. So I'm gonna be opening up Photoshop next to add the final touches, which is, excuse me, which is basically gonna be adding some clouds in the top part. And then also adding some, maybe some blur. We're gonna see how it looks. 
These get saved as JPEGs, you can just change it, but JPEG is totally fine. So I'm basically gonna make my colors black and white. I'm gonna duplicate the layer by hitting Control J, go to Render, and then go to Clouds. And then you can click right here and you can start going down the list, but I'm gonna leave mine probably around overlay. And then I'm gonna take my eraser. Eraser definitely on the higher setting around 1400. And you wanna click around and then just so you can highlight it and see just certain, you know, things that get changed. Merge these, hitting Control E, hit Control J again. And you can go to blur, lens blur. And then you can change the radius up more on the blur or the blur distance. But I'm gonna go to mine to 16. And then I'm gonna erase basically around everything except for the corners. So now that we have that, we can merge these again. And then we can basically start adding whatever we'd like. I'm gonna actually add a monogram logo I made on top of this just because it's gonna look very clean. So I gotta figure out which import it is. I believe it's this one. So you can see on how these actually look and it's very interesting to see it for yourself rather than watching a tutorial. So definitely be doing this with your work. And let's just say we're gonna take this and make it smaller. And you can put this at the bottom or you can actually leave this right in the middle. And then maybe go to blending options, add like a drop shadow, put the spread up, the distance all the way down, then mess with the size, no opacity, or you can even bring this all the way down and you can make it like a little lock screen or, you know, showing image. So this is something very interesting to do. Of course, when you start making stuff smaller, just go back to the drop shadow and make the size up a little bit and the opacity down. But once you guys have this, you're basically done. And if you want to see the kind of starting off image, all I have to do is go back to my desktop and then I'll just paste it in really quick. And you're going to see this, the difference on how fast and how quickly we can make something change. So bring this up to the top and right here we just have like the basic, let's put the monogram logo, some basic thing. It looks kind of cool, but once we start adding those black and white filters, it really tells a whole different story. And I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you do enjoy these daily uploads, of course, let me know in the comment section below and also leave a like and a subscribe on my channel. I'm going to be hosting a lot of different things. So of course, guys, stay tuned on my channel and keep supporting. Other than that, really hope you enjoy your day. Hope you have an amazing time on Lightroom and Photoshop and whatever you want to making. Definitely show me your examples in the comment section below. Just link a couple print screens or hit me up on Twitter or whatever you guys like. And other than that, guys, I'll see you in my next video. Peace out.